Good morning, everybody. So it is the first Tuesday of the month, and we are on Ask the Expert with Eagle Radio. You can tune in on 1590 AM or 955 FM. 15 seconds, stand by. I've got stand by. Aaron with me today. And then, as always, we've got Webby. Close the hatches, we're ready. <laughs> so tune in. If you have any questions, drop them below. If not, uh, enjoy the show. And good morning. Welcome to the Ask the Expert Show here on 1590 KVGB 95.5 FM. We are the talk of the town. Welcome back in. It's our monthly visit with folks from South Bend Industrial Hemp here in Great Bend. And it's the Ask the Expert Show. So we have, who should I say first? Should I say, go, do you like ladies Aaron first. and Melissa? Ladies okay. first. Oh, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa and Aaron Baldwin with us here on the program. Richard's probably out just What's he doing today? Uh, actually, out uh, we've started some field work done. He's, he's yeah. Doing some I guess stuff. farming goes yeah. on. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, it at does. This time of year, guys, great to see you here. This is an exciting time now because, of course, we have the Great Bend Farm Ranch and Hemp Expo coming to Great Bend. How exciting is that to have hemp thrown on the end of that title for a uh, one of the larger programs and and farm shows in the Midwest? It's good. Uh, it just really shows how far along the industry has come and that people are really looking at this uh, crop and, um, you know, the uses of it more seriously. Uh -huh. They're really seeing it as a viable crop and a viable industry, and, and it just shows how far along we've came in the last few years. Last, yeah, it seems like I mean, it's, it's, last it's, month, usually, because it's always fun when you guys come in because there's, right. there's some new development. So you were at this event last year, right? No, well, long. kind of. Yeah. We signed up for it. We were gearing up for it. And then COVID hit. And oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 everything yeah. went virtual. We did a virtual booth. And then they actually had us give on or get on and do a presentation about what we do. And so we got to we got to do some public speaking with it. But how could I forget about COVID? I'm not <laughs> sure. yeah. OK, but we're getting close to getting back to normal now. So yes. tell me about your presence out there at this year's event. What are people going to be able to see? What are people going to be able to find out about? I mean, tell me what's going on. OK, so we're pretty excited. Um, we're going to have kind of three different areas to our booth. Um, we're going to have one area that's going to be highlighting CBD and our products there, how to grow it, just kind of educate more on the CBD side. We're going to have one area of our booth that is focused on the growing of fiber. So that would be targeted towards anybody farming that wants to farm for fiber or grain. Or, uh, and then the third area of our booth is going to be for the processing facility and the industrial purposes and things like that. Okay, so... And that's the thing, of course, I guess, is education. What we've been talking about on the show for a while is like since you guys started coming in here, there's so many different directions that uh, you can go with with hemp and what you can do with it. Yeah. So I have to point out real quick, um, our we actually just hired our first employee besides <laughs> us. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, he's on our live, Dodge Elgood. So anyway, I just wanted to give him a shout out because he is getting a stiff learning curve here. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, we've thrown him into the farm. He's been out of the processing facility. And so maybe we'll drag him in. I don't know how he feels about talking on the radio, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's, that's a standard procedure. Did wasn't that part of the interview process? I mean, yeah, throw to the wolves at the very top. It just says in bold letters, "Is you will get thrown to the wolves." But, uh, now he's a good kid. He just graduated from Fort Hayes, um, and he's from up up north area. So I guess we've imported our first our first employee in to get started. He's going to be with me in the facility to to you know train him to get the equipment going and up and running, and hopefully um, somebody that can train others and just kind of take that and, and run with it so how do you find how do you come across this young man uh he's actually a relative of the agronomist our agronomist well steve our agronomist on the on the, on the farm so okay. he's 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 an ag kid smart kid he's, and he's just as excited as anybody to like be the first and get feet wet in this industry he's, he's pretty excited okay so i always say that the things change so much and every time i talk to you you know one month to the other so I throw out this. What's new out at South Bend Industrial Hemp this month? <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, when I sit down and I write the outline for what we're going to talk about today, it's always like, holy crap. Like, do I have anything to say? And then <laughs> well, yeah. I, I start to make a list. Um, so we actually, we finished our 
quote unquote show season, you know, because we went up to the Iowa Farm Show, mm-hmm. did South Dakota, we did uh, where else? Nebraska, did Nebraska, Nebraska Missouri. Um, we just finished NOCO, which is the hard or the hardest, the largest uh, hemp show in the Midwest or not the Midwest, the the United States. We went out there, um, hung out with Formation Ag, and then got to see a lot of the booths out there. That was exciting. Yeah. Um, they had they project around sixty thousand people at this show, and it is solely hemp focused. There is no other ag. Except for at, him, guys? Denver. In Denver. Oh, yeah. 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 And so I would say, what, 70% of the show, 60% of the show was focused towards the industrial purposes yeah. of him. Yes. Which two years ago when they had the show, it was 100% CBD. Oh, yeah. yeah. Richard and I went out uh, the first time we went out two years ago, and it was, yeah, it was all CBD, all you know, extraction. Extraction and everything. And this year, is, it was smaller. But it was more focused, and and everybody we talked to was more focused, more serious, more educated, and it was really a, geared a lot more towards the industrial fiber grain and 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 side of things that we're really focused on. So that was really cool. We met some great contacts too, some stuff we're really excited to talk about too. So. We actually connected with a company out of Kansas City, and so the f- first hemp house in Kansas is going up in Kansas City. And so they are looking for suppliers for raw materials. So we are hoping to connect with them and finalize some deals and build our first hemp house here in Kansas. So tell me about a hemp house. Uh, It's pretty cool. So there's different aspects. They're actually making a a structural block out of it that is a compressed block out of the fiber and everything. So um, they can actually build a, a structural wall out of it. Uh, the RF rating is amazing. Um, the insulation rating is awesome. Or I'm sorry, the FR rating, which is fire resistant and, and the insulation. Plus, uh, it's just, you know, the economic and the, and the blueprint or the, the uh, footprint of it is just is, is pretty cool. And there's, there's different ways of doing it. And they're actually going to build it out of like three or four different processes so each wall is going to maybe be a little bit different so we can and they're putting sensors in the walls to to monitor moisture and to monitor heat and energy efficiency and all this stuff so it's 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 a real house but it's it's a model for all this information that they're trying to collect off of it too it's it's really cool so it's like a demo then well yeah Yeah. it's it'd be maybe like a spec home in the house in the house world but um it's it's just gonna have not they're not doing one technology with it one way of building it they're doing every which one they can kind of find and see which one's really working in the real world and and all that so it's it's going to be so okay, be i'm trying to get you know my small brain wrapped around this because i, I think of traditional construction you, you know you yeah. have a big concrete truck out there and you're pouring a foundation yeah. and, then, and then you're building the, the walls and things like that yeah it would be more like you're um Oh, like out in Arizona, kind of you see more of your, I don't want to say adobe type houses. But, yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not going to, and, and they can put brick up on the outside of the walls or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's it's not a traditional style building, but um, it, it's it's a little bit different look too, which which is, but they also can cover the walls with like a, a spray hempcrete type or spray insulation that, that looks more like a plaster or something, so it gets more traditional looking, but it's it'll be different. The advantages is the temperature regulation. Um, people talk about the toxicity and you know just building materials in general. It's not an area that I'm super versed in, like traditional mm-hmm. construction building, but this is supposed to be more natural, better for the environment, um, just overall a better building structure for you as the home owner and people living in it and then a building yeah that was kind of the phrase i was looking for it'll be a carbon negative um, construction so that's that's pretty cool okay so you brought in the i still am amazed at the at the hemp spoon that you brought in (laughs) well have those at the farm show so you can come check them out okay so so People, that, there's no odor with this. It's not like you just sit there. Right. No. Right. That, yeah. that's, that's all taken out, so you don't have a hemp house that yeah. smells no. like hemp. Okay. No. Yeah, so... Um, Cheech and Chong's house. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> it doesn't smell like that. Yeah, it's, it's actually 
odorless really when it comes uh -huh. down to that and and jumping over maybe to kind of the the animal side of it we did get some did we talk about that last time we've got some animal bedding out in in a, in a local uh, horse barn that really has been out for two weeks now and we've had really awesome luck with that that's one of the really cool things is it is odorless and it's actually you know when you get into a big barn that has 10 20 horses in it you know your ammonia smell after a week it gets pretty ripe and and this is really helping with the ammonia smell um so back to that it is very very like odorless you don't have all that craziness that you think it would have so. it seems like you every moments of wallet uh, wow what we, we look what we can do with this now I mean, oh, you yeah. just find the new stuff all the time yeah it's it never stops let me just expand on that. So at NOCO, we found this company and they're doing 3D printing with hemp. And so they are actually going to be at our open house in July. So you'll get to meet them there and interview them. But they had their 3D printer set up. They made chess boards. They made sunglasses. They had all sorts of things going on. Um, but all 100% from hemp. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I'm mean, telling you, anything made from plastics or anything like that, they can... The material that, you, if anybody's familiar with 3D printing, um, of course you can design anything, but the actual material that goes into the printer was a was a hemp compound based material. So it was, uh, it's, it's not. It, it looks like plastic. I mean, it really does. It's a little more grainy, maybe a little bit organic looking, but it at the end of the day, it looks like plastic. So it was, it was really neat. What are the is hemp these products that are are they going to be recyclable? Yes. Yes, uh, very recyclable. Um, uh, another one is that a company had designed some uh, plastic bottles that they basically just dis dis um, designed them and their compound. The way it's made up is that once them things hit, and we've talked about this before, they can just decide when it breaks down, when it decomposes. And they had these bottles that on the shelf life was fine, but once it hit the landfill in 30 days, it was decomposed. That that's I mean that's a game changer for the for the world in my in my opinion. See, all you guys need now that now is a remake of the Three Little Pigs, right? You got the straw house, the <laughs> yeah. stick house, yeah. and the house made of hemp. Yeah, the big bad yeah. wolf couldn't blow down. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's on the way. The remake of the Three Little Pigs. We're gonna take a break. We'll have more to show right after this. Yeah, it was really cool. The show was awesome. I mean. We were a little worried that COVID would have it down and it wouldn't be that great, but it ended up being. Where they awesome. have that? Uh, actually, at the the big Western Expo where they do right on, like, where they do the big Denver livestock like show. I seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. And they had everything like all the booths were spread out. God, we, I got like seventeen thousand steps just walking around this thing because yeah. everything was so spread out. But mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a good show. Uh, yeah, Denver is Denver, but. It was, it was a good show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, where, where do we want to go to next here? Do you want to talk about the open house? or where you... um, what uh, do you got Yeah, here? let's talk about the open house, and then we'll switch over yeah. to green. Back on the Ask the Experts show here on KB. I think someone's trying to call in early on Trading Post. And now that they found my, my cell phone number, they're, they're, they're trying to sell a washing machine today. So, I, where do you want to go now? Because I, I can't remember what I asked you to uh, okay. check my phone. So. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not focused on yeah. the show today, guys. No, you're fine. So, we got a lot of things going on, um, but we are always looking ahead. So, the immediate task that South Bend is... Besides the Great Bend Farm Show, the following week we are going to start planting. So follow our Facebook page with that, South Bend Industrial Hemp. We'll keep you updated. We'll... <laughs> So popular. Um, yes. He's popular. Um, so we'll keep you updated with that. We'll kind of show you how we're choosing to plant this year, whether that be with our planter or our drill. So stay tuned to find out. Uh, we've got several different varieties that are going to go in the ground. Um, I'll show you the differences in the seed. And then because I, I am always planning and last year our open house was I wouldn't say thrown together, but, you know, it was a few weeks in advance that we started talking about this open house and making it happen. 
We are already having inquiries about people wanting to come to our open house this year, about when we're having it. Uh, we have a farmers from down in the Wichita area. They've got their charter bus lined up, so they're bringing a group up here. So I started already our planning. So July 9th, we will have our open house. It is a Friday evening, 5 to 9 p.m., come and go. Uh, so save, mark your calendars, save a little bit of that evening to come out, spend some time with Eagle Radio. They'll be out there live as well. Um, and then we have a variety of vendors that are going to come out. So we'll have the Canna Nurses of Kansas like we did last year. We have the Hemp 3D, which is the, the hemp, uh, 3d printing they will be there as well um i actually have a lady that she grows hops down in um southwest kansas and so she makes her own craft beers and everything and so she's going to make a hemp beer as well and bring her craft beer truck up so we've got so that beer. yeah <laughs> um we just it's really exciting um i didn't realize they would catch such traction so second annual open house is already being planned if you want to be a part of it reach out to us um we've got some exciting things happening where are you guys located 95 Southwest 20th Road, so two miles south of town on 281, and then once you hit 20th Road, you're going to go two miles west, so just right outside of town. And there yeah. it is. Yeah. So as you get ready to plant this, year, we always kind of are, are familiar with, with corn planting, soybean planting, you know, get in, into the fall, you know, fall wheat, you know. So what kind of preparations are made to, to your fields for uh, to, it's, to plant hemp? Um, really nothing the way we're doing it and that's our our whole goal is to nothing really special it, it's pretty typical we want ground temperature to come up but we can also get it in the ground a, a little bit sooner our temperatures don't have to be as high uh, for the hemp seed plus it's good because you know weeds aren't really germinating yet and stuff as much so um, we're, we are planting into a cover crop so here probably this week as soon as this lovely wind dies down we'll go in and and burn down our cover crop and get the field clean and um, we'll plant right into the cover crop the other side last year's crop has a really awesome uh, uh, volunteer. volunteer crop coming up and and we knew that was a possibility so there's we're probably not gonna have to plant replant that just due to the volunteer if we do it might be spotting in or kind of planting in at half a rate to the what we will the new crop just because we have a really good stand already so it it's really the same as anything but the seed in our planter you know set up our lines make sure the planter set good and take off and kind of to expand on the volunteer crop you know people are curious how that happens you know because you don't really you get some volunteer corn but not enough mm -hmm. to to plant a whole field these heads on the the seed head on a hemp plant can be two feet long or two feet tall and so by the time the top of your plant has hit maturity the bottom is shattered so ideal time to get in and harvest is when your most of your plant is mature that middle we'll say of the 24 inches that middle 18 to 20 inches are mature you know the top of the plant's still going to have some green seed and the bottom of your plant is going to shatter a little bit but that's where we're getting all these volunteer plants from sometimes Aaron, you see, I, volunteer wheat's not a good thing. Right, yeah, people are like, oh, man, man oh, yeah, vo vo good. volunteer yeah. is a bad word in the farming world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, volunteer corn coming up, and it's all over in your bean field, you know, and you got to kill it out. And volunteer wheat means somebody wasn't doing a good job on the combine. Like, But it, it, is, a, it, it is different, and it's not a, a – there is not as much of a way to – get it get it controlled with the with just the you know the nature of the of the head like she was talking about there's so much seed on it and the way it matures but we can actually we can utilize it so it's we don't worry about it as much i guess the big thing will be monitoring disease pressure because like for example when you plant corn on corn on corn you're you get corn root worm pressure um so monitoring our disease pressure monitoring our insect pressure and see if this is a viable option for kansas you feel like you're running a farming operation inside of a big stadium you know what i mean <laughs> i mean you're, you're down there on the playing field and there's this big stadium around with all these people you know sitting around yeah, and getting their tickets looking of, down there yeah. watching i feel know? like uh, you know 
And I mean, it's cool. But yeah, it is cool, and it's always new, but it's also like, you know, we're half the time we're doing, you know, not half the time. Most of the time we're we're planting corn and soybeans and doing what we know how to do, and then and then the nerds come in. <laughs> <laughs> The good nerds, though, but that, I mean, it's just so we're just taking so much data and so much new stuff, and and um, it it teaches us a lot, and it honestly, it really opens our eyes up too, back to our conventional side. Like, it, you can take some of this over there too, and be like, yeah, you know, it's it's that's a great idea, just on the stuff we're doing every day too. So it's it, it's great knowledge, and like the stadium. <laughs> I, it's a it's a good nervousness. It's an exciting nervousness. But we have a growers group. We have farmers growing specifically for us to buy their crop to feed our fiber processing facility, and they're starting planting this week. And so, you know, you you just hope that you did everything that you could to set them up for success to help them get started on the right foot and, and checking in and making sure they're happy with their seed depth and, and how they're planting it. And so I'm excited because I want them to experience success as well. Yeah. So now we don't worry about our farm. We worry about 10 others. <laughs> <laughs> are, those, are those other farms that are, that are, are going to be planting hemp that are coming to your uh, processing facility, are they fairly close around here? Both. Um, yeah, there's some uh, close and there's some far away. So okay. We were all the way Sterling, from Sterling, Kansas. We've got some in Sterling, Kansas. Mm -hmm. We've got some in Nebraska City, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, Keys, Oklahoma. Um, just kind of lots scattered throughout the yeah, Midwest. From north to south, really, like I said, up from in, in the Oklahoma or Nebraska down into Oklahoma. So it's about a four hour radius is where mm -hmm. we've got growers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then when Back in my day, out on the farm, when I got the chance to drive the wheat truck, the elevator, you know, you'd have everybody be in line. So, what's transportation like for, uh, you know, when, for this coming in? Is it is it baled? Is it? Yeah. So uh, once they get their their fiber crop up and it'd be in bales, uh, it will bring it in, in in bale form. Either they'll bring it in, um, just kind of like any other crop, you know, we'll price it FOB or we'll price it if we come what's pick FOB? it up. What's um, FOB? I'm going to draw a blank now. You tell me since you... Well, well I... priced, priced at the farm or price delivered. So um, it just depends. You know, some farmers are capable of hauling their own hay around or hauling bales. Some aren't. Some don't want to mess with it. So we'll price accordingly. And okay. and yes, the, this geographic is a little bit bigger than, than we think it will typically be. But to get started, it's just kind of what we have to do. You know, hopefully, you know, in the next years to come that we'll have facilities within an hour or less than than anybody so um, it's not ideal but it works i mean we do it every day it, it, we haul hay every day i've been hauling hay all winter so it's it's not a big thing so. <laughs> you guys are unique because i i i, I just you're just so laid back okay <laughs> and then over here motor brain is just is yeah. just spinning the whole time yeah yeah you can see that like yeah. you can yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. It, it, it's unique. It's, it's really cool. We need to take one more break and then back to your uh, final segment of the show. You have to stay around for first half of trading post, and we can get some yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Gablesite. Let's see. I'm going to give people an update uh, real quick and come back on, on the farm ranch and Hemp Expo. Yeah. Yes. And see, and then that give me on the open house. I mean, is that cool? Anything yeah. Else yeah. That's fine. Yeah. 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 I might hit, or we can wait no, to. Yeah. So just save that. Just save this because I've got some stuff for um, seed nutrition and feed, but we can. We're rolling. Let's just keep doing what we're doing, and then we'll save this for next time. It's really, really cool. I'm just. It's uh, new, something new every day. That's the awesome thing about it. It's kind of like almost lit a fire, you know, farming. I mean, you get in a rut farming. Do the same thing. Been doing it for you know my whole life, and and now this is just something that we can just. Okay. We'll get back to Ask the Experts show here today. Uh, Melissa and Aaron Baldwin in with us. Okay, Farm Ranch and Hemp Expo uh, out at the Great Bend Expo Grounds coming up. Make sure to stop by and see you guys where you're going to be located. 
Uh, well, set up is yeah. today. Yeah. Um, I think we're in building one. If not, we're in building two. I know we have the concrete floors, so we're in building yeah, one or two. Um, so Wednesday, what is it? Nine to five. Mm -hmm. Thursday is nine to seven. And then Friday is nine to four. Mm -hmm. So come out and see us. We'll have our staffs. We'll have everything on hand. Um, if you want to order some hemp home styles, we'll actually have some of those products like the cutting boards, the serving trays, the mirrors. Um, and we're, we're putting in orders for that to help with shipping for you guys. Um, and then we'll have our animal bedding. We'll have our fiber. We'll have, we'll have a whole bunch of honey. stuff out there. Um, I, we are out of honey, yeah. but the bees, the bees got to get going again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, real quick here. Uh, update on the processing facility. Ready to go? Uh, yeah, so they're pretty much... Oh. We... I'll tell you a quick story. Minute and so, a half. Yeah, okay, Minute quick half. story. Um, I was pulling out of the drive the other day, and this very official uh, vehicle pulled up, and these guys came out, and they looked very stern, and I was like, oh, how can I help you? And they said, are you South Bend Industrial Hemp? And I said, maybe. And <laughs> he said, we're the, we're the state fire marshal and we'd like to do, uh, we'd like to go through your facility and, and check that out. And so I was like, oh, perfect. Not a big deal because we don't mind inspections. So anyway, they came out, checked out our facility. Uh, we got the green light from the state fire marshal. So now we're just working with the local city for um, getting up to code there. And so, yeah, we're just rocking and rolling. Yeah. So what do the fire marshal guys? Do they look like men in black? Yeah, or? kind of. I mean, <laughs> they 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 were serious, and and the reason they had for, body cams on, yeah, like cameras reason, attached to them, and everything. The reason for that was that the the way the state did it, they switched Kansas State Fire Marshal over to um, enforce the codes that we have to go by. So, um, but they're mainly focused on extraction facilities that are working with you know, chemicals, butane, and, and stuff like that, and that are dealing with CBD and THC stuff. We're not doing any of that. We're solely mechanical. So they uh, they said that everything was pretty kosher. So, so if you want to check us out, stay up and to date with our story, um, South Bend Industrial Hemp on Facebook, or follow our website, southbendindustrialhemp.com. You Money. You slammed it. I was like, you, you wrap it up. The last word ain't and I was like, it. The, the, how do I end this? That, that, we're pretty kosher. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you on the first Tuesday of every month back here. Um, if you like us to talk about anything specific, feel free to reach out. And Webby, Aaron, and I are signing so, yeah. off for another the, month. The state